This video will serve as a guide to installing my improved dig site randomization mod, as well as the requirements for it, Python and Cobra tools. Uh, Cobra tools is needed to access uh, the internal game files in order to add things to the game. And Python is needed to run Cobra tools. Uh, to get Python, I kind of recommend probably using Anaconda. You can go to anaconda.com and download that. This is just kind of a, a distribution package for Python that makes it a little more user friendly. Go ahead and download that. And then once you got that, you can go ahead and jump into your download folders and run the exe to install. And this is what you should see. We need 64 bit for the uh, Cobra tools install, as well as uh, Python 3.11 or 3.11 if you prefer. Uh, accept the license agreement without reading it. I'm sure there's nothing untoward in there. <laughs> Who has time to read licensing agreements? Uh, install for sure. Choose where you want to install, then hit next. This should be this should be fine. The default settings. Um, you should need to add it to path. Takes a little while, but eventually you should see installation completed and you can just move on. Yep. So when you open the Anaconda Navigator, this is what you should see. Uh, if you do the command prompt, that will bring up a window like this. And if you simply type in Python, it will give you the information about your install and you can verify that you are properly on 3.11 here. So that should be a first step you do. And if that is correct, then the first step is completed. Python installed properly. So to set up Cobra tools, you need to go download it. Uh, you do that through github.com slash open Naja Cobra tools, as you can see here at the top of this browser window. Um, you should see a page like this. It looks very complicated, but if you scroll down, you'll find the installation steps and you just click this link here to get the latest source code, which then downloads a file, a zip file. And you can see here the installing prerequisites. Uh, we already did the Python 3.11 64-bit. Uh, you should make sure you have this redistributable for the Lua decompile here, this one, um, which is simply you just run and install that. Um, this does say here to make sure that you've selected the option to add Python to path during installation. We didn't do that, but the Anaconda terminal window um, should handle that just fine. If you run into issues getting it to work, um, you can repeat the install while adding Python to path. So when you've downloaded the zip file, move it to whatever directory you want to run it from. I like to run it straight from C. That minimizes the amount of keystrokes to get to it. Um, and just hit extract here, and that will extract the Cobra Tools directory, Cobra Tools master. Looking inside, you should see all these files here like this. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to make this little readme uh, for myself so that I can always remember and very quickly access the Cobra tools I use, specifically this oval tool GUI, which is what I use to add and extract files from JWE2. Um, so it looks like this, it, there's CD, which is a change directory command. C, Cobra tools master is the folder we extracted here on local disk C. So this will redirect Python to that folder. And then this calls Python itself and the piece of code you wanna run, which is the oval tool. So what I do then is you just simply copy this you can pop over here, you can launch a command prompt, just right click to put the copied text into there and then just hit enter. So you'll see this happen um, the first time you run this. You don't have the dependencies for the oval tool, but it will install them anyway. So you just type yeah, hit enter, and then it starts to do this. You'll see all the stuff start extracting here. This may take a little while. All right, and then you will see uh, this window pop up here. This is the actual editor. So once that's popped up, things are looking good. You should have Cobra tools working. Next thing you need to do is find your JWE2 install. Okay, so once you've found your Jurassic World Evolution 2 directory, um, you should see these folders inside, Islands Movies, Win64. You're looking for specifically oval data here under Win64. This is where all basically all the game code lives. Um, you can see there's folders for the DLCs here, folders for like updates, and then like main game stuff basically. So it's like paid DLC folders, update folders, and then like I think these are the free updates that aren't corresponding to DLC releases. Like the zip lines is one of these. Um, specifically, you're looking for in this case 
So depending on the mod you're installing, right, in general, it might go into a different folder. For the random dig site mod, that goes into content zero here. So you want to go to content zero, you want to go to main OVL. Usually if you're editing something, it'll be inside main OVL. This is where all like the data tables and like the core Lua scripts that run the game kind of live. Think of it that way. So you just click on main.ovl, it'll start to load. This will take a little while. You want to just kind of let it sit until it's done. Yeah, you can see down here after a little bit of time, mapping files starts to show up and you see this progress bar. So you're basically waiting for that to like finish. I should say this is the first time I've used this updated version of uh, Corporate Tools. I've been running off of an older version I installed a year ago. So making this video was a good excuse for me to upgrade. The UI is a little different than what I'm used to. You can also see here on the side the uh, contents of the directory. I don't think the old version I used had this, um, but I imagine this probably doesn't show up initially for you. It looks like you can pick the game like up here, um, which is interesting too. Yeah, this is this is a little bit of functionality that I'm not uh, I haven't made use of. Um, but anyway, yeah, this. Uh, Cobra Tools works with basically just Frontier games in general. You can use it with uh, JWE1 and, and uh, Planet Zoo. I, I've only used it with JWE2. I don't know about this loading file loaders. This is just kind of sitting here. I'm not sure this is actually doing anything right now. So once you've downloaded the improved dig site randomization mod and extracted that, you should see three folders, Chaos, Flex, and Vanilla. These are three different randomization schemes to use in the game. Um, specifically, Vanilla follows the base game randomization scheme of having uh, the dinosaurs only randomized within their their like subfamily, basically, uh, and further divides it into tiers. So by subfamily, I mean like sauropod, hadrosaur, ceratopsian, um, piscivore, small, medium, and large carnivores are all separate. And then by tiers, I, the best example there I can give is the sauropods are divided into three tiers. So the randomization only randomizes within a given tier for sauropods, where tier one is like Apatosaurus and Amargosaurus and Camarasaurus. So those three can shuffle around and change places. And tier three sauropods are Mementi and Dreadnoughtus. So those two can swap spots, right? And so this keeps that same vanilla randomization scheme of uh, these very fine subdivisions. It just adds in all the DLC dinosaurs into the randomization, right? In base game, the DLC species stay fixed to their same research style, always in the same spot. They are never randomized. So if you just want to simply add them, but preserve the style of randomization Frontier has implemented, you do vanilla. If you want to do a little bit, get a little bit crazier with it, you can do flex. So what flex does is it removes the tiers. So you randomize still within the family, like sauropods randomize with other sauropods and so on and so forth, uh, but they can go anywhere. So you can end up with Drenatus as your first sauropod in the research tree, whereas that'll never happen in base game. In base game, it cannot move any further up the tree than the position the source is in. One basically moves forward or backwards one tile only. So of course that means that you aren't guaranteed at all on flex to have a decent starter dinosaur you will occasionally get rosters that on a difficult challenge won't work but that's fine this is a mod right you, you've you decided to do this to yourself it's your fault and if you want to go really crazy you can do chaos and so what chaos does is rather than randomizing by family chaos randomizes the entire research tree um the only subdivisions are like herbivore one two three the carnivores the aquatics etc Basically, any of the six different research tiles you click on, on the main research menu, it'll randomize everything inside that tree with no scheme whatsoever. So you might randomize the hadrosaur plus sauropod research tree and get a research tree where all the sauropods are up in the front and you don't get any hadrosaurs to like two stars or something, right? So basically, these are three tiers of this mod that get increasingly more chaotic and move further away from the base randomization Frontier has implemented and designed. So once you've picked which one of these you want to use, you simply open the folder. You'll see inside seven files. These are all Lua scripts. There is the C0 tech tree data.lua. This one controls 
the categories of every individual dinosaur in the game in regards to randomization. Like, uh, is this di is is Myasaura a hadrosaur? Right, that's controlled in there. And then these files here, these six, are the research trees themselves, which tell you what each node unlocks. We can look at these real quick. So tech tree Lua is very deep file, very big, a lot of stuff in here. Uh, at the very end here is where the research stuff happens. So you can see here we're in chaos. So for instance, all of the pterosaurs in the game are all bundled under tech tree random flying tier one because tier two has been deleted. And if you look at the uh, the version of this file from the base game without any mods, you'll see like Ceridactylus, Dimorphodon, and Tapajara is tier one, and you'll see uh, Pteranodon, Geo no, not even Geosnerberga, Trop Tropognathus, Pteranodon, and Marodactylus is tier two. None of the DLC creatures show up in this file. And then if we look at the flying tech tree here, this describes all the research nodes, right? So what you would see is node 1A with like random flying one, random flying one, and then like node 1B with random flying one and Geolopterus as like hard coded to be in the research tree in that particular node. And you'd go through here, they'd switch over eventually to tier two for the higher tier animals. And you'd see all the hard coded like Quetzalcoatlus and other DLC creatures. Um, so that's how this mod works. Just if you're wondering behind the scenes. Uh, to install it, you just grab all seven of these guys. You drag them over here into the other window and let go. And you'll see a progress bar and you'll see some stuff here happening. And yeah, when it's done, you'll see that it's loaded all the stuff in. I don't, it, it's interesting that this is reloaded 172,755 files. Because uh, this used to say, you know, seven, <laughs> adding seven files. Maybe that's uh, the individual lines or some other thing there. That's kind of weird. Uh, but once that's all loaded in, you can just go here and hit save. And this is going to overwrite your main OVL in your GWT folder with the new files. So you got to sit here for a little bit and let it go. This takes this takes a little bit. There's a lot of files packed inside main.ovl that it has to like recompress and like, you know, repackage. It's not as simple as like drag and dropping, right? These files have to be injected into this archive and it has to be repackaged. All like the links need to be remade or whatever. I don't know all the details myself. So this would be a good time to like walk away and, and get a coffee or something and come back later and check the progress bar. It takes usually it takes like two minutes, something like that. Now, in my case, the GUI here timed out, but I can see on the terminal window that it's still working. So the the two minute estimate seemed to be for the old version. It seems like the current one is a little more. Um, It, it certainly runs cleaner. The old one used to throw a lot of errors, but it seems like it's taking a little bit longer here. And yeah, now now it updated down here. Um, the progress bar finally jumped, but it basically went from 4% to like 100%. So if this window freezes up on you, don't worry. The gate, it's still working. Just don't close it. If you get a little error that's like Python's not responding, just ignore that. Do not close out of Python. Just let it sit for a few minutes. And this is going to probably depend a bit on your system resources too. So if you have a, an older device, an older computer, this might take longer to run. So it used to be that Cobra Tools would actually give you a final time to write the main.ovl file out to know that it was completed, which would show up here in the terminal window. It was a really handy way to know it was finished for me. I would wait for the timestamp to come up and, you know, be confidently certain it was finished. For whatever reason, that doesn't seem to come up now. So the last thing I see here is writing archive static. Uh, but this appears to be done. So you can go ahead and close this out. Saves the config, close that out. And if you really want to be sure, you can go to your oval data folder here on content zero, and you can see the updated timestamp for writing out uh, the main.ovl file. So 1.49 p.m., that's during this recording. So with all that done, you can just go ahead and pop open JWE2. So once you're in game, uh, you just do a randomization like normal. So if you want to do a custom challenge, for example, let's just set one up here real quick. Uh, square levels expanded. Sure. We'll just do a real quick one. The big thing is, of course, is to actually use dig site randomization. Turn that on. Let's take a look at what this has achieved for us. So if we pop here into the research tree. Fully randomized. Pteranodon, Geosternbergia. We got... Quetzalcoatlus right in the middle. You know, over here we got Noth, Ichthy, and Attenborough on the first tier. 
And yeah, you'll see the full randomized uh, trees. There's a few other details you might notice. Uh, one is that certain dinosaurs in the game don't have these icons apparently. So I've had to swap out for different ones. Uh, you can see here like Oviraptor shows up. That's because Giganoraptor doesn't appear to have one of these two icons and it'll break the uh, the game if it randomizes. Um, so that's been fixed. If you ever open up the research tree and it bugs out, it's corrupted and you like can't scroll through and you see weird stuff. Insert example here. Uh, that means that there's some sort of dinosaur in game that doesn't have one of these images on the tile and I need to know that there's still an issue. So that's a bug. You need to report that to me so that I can try to find out which dinosaur is missing and correct it. Um, I don't know any way to get more information than the fact that there still is a problem. So it's going to be a little tedious to iron out all the wrinkles if there are still wrinkles. If you try to launch DW2 and it doesn't open at all, that means there was an issue with writing the main OVL. You maybe um, changed something you weren't supposed to or missed a file or closed it too soon when it was writing and the OVL file has been corrupted. You can go ahead and go to the game on Steam. Go to properties. This probably only applies if you're using it on Steam, of course. Uh, and Steam has this nice thing where you go to installed files, verify this game's files are installed correctly, verify integrity. If you click this button here, it'll go through and it'll look for changes in the files that it thinks is damaged, in this case mods. And if the game's not launching, mods that are probably improperly installed. Uh, and it'll reset the files to what they are normally, which will fix your issues with launching. And then you could try and reinstall the mod um, again to try and get it to work. If you don't like the randomization you've got, or it doesn't seem like it's going to be viable, one quick tip you can do, you can just restart the challenge that redoes the randomization from scratch. Uh, and you can do that until you get a tree that seems like it's going to work. You might need to do that, especially if you're using uh, the Flex version or Chaos version of the randomization. And that should be everything you need to know about how to install the research mod and how it works. I hope you enjoy it.